Welcome to Uncaged, the show that celebrates thought leadership from today's top business leaders. The program provides a voice to amazing executives from around the globe who are shaping the world of business today and mapping the path to the commerce of tomorrow. Today, we're speaking with Diane Sutton. Hey, Diane, how are you? Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's great to have you on the show. Diane is the founder and chair of Vision Point Marketing, which is an integrated marketing agency helping institutions of higher education meet their admissions, branding, and communications goals. Diane is a, an expert in this space, and I'm excited to go through, maybe, maybe learn a little bit more about higher education as I I have a son going through the process of trying to get into higher education, uh, so maybe she'll have some tips and tricks for me. But before we get there, Diane, tell us a little bit about yourself and your career. Sure. Yeah. Don't really know exactly where to start, but I'm gonna um, I'm gonna go back to a few things that I think kind of shaped me. Um, so I'm primarily from North Carolina. I went to school here all the way up through college, UNC Chapel Hill, go Heels. And <laughs> I just had to get, get that, that in. We won't get into that right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I, um, I grew up on a black Angus farm. So we had like 400 head of cows and, and 400 acres of land. And, um, and anyone who's lived on a farm or been around a farm, you kind of know how much hard work goes into that. Um, at, at a very young age, I lost my mother. So my father basically raised me and my two sisters and um, he really shaped the person and the entrepreneur, the business person that I am. Um, he raised us all as if we were all boys. <laughs> My dad was kind of an Eagle Scout entrepreneur, international traveler, outstanding mm -hmm. host, uh, joke teller, romantic, mm -hmm. and sort of Southern outdoorsman. Um, his religion was always the golden rule. Mm -hmm. And he was fiercely independent, stubborn. And also my hero. So, That's um, so yeah, I saw my father as an entrepreneur and sometimes successful and sometimes not. Um, but he was my role model. And um, I knew that I could learn a lot from watching what he did. So after I graduated from UNC, I had a lot of jobs, a few jobs, mainly in sales and sales management with large corporations. And then when the tech bubble burst in 2001, I was at a tech firm. Um, I decided to start Vision Point. Um, so frankly, it was my need to control my future that was my primary motivator. Yeah. Um, but at Vision Point, we have our values. We call them Vision Points. And yeah, I mean, let's get more into yeah. Vision Point. I, I love the idea of creating a business to kind of manage your future. As a fellow entrepreneur, I certainly have share that with you, the idea mm -hmm. of of wanting to kind of control in some ways your own destiny and, and shape it. And so tell me more about how Vision Point Marketing has built. Yeah, so Vision Point, um, the crux of our culture is really one thing that makes us very special, not just what we do and who we do it for, um, but our, our values are, you know, a lot of companies, what they'll do is they, they create their values and then they kind of put them on the wall or put them in a website. And um, we've built our entire culture around our values so that um, all of our people, basically, you get hired based on your values, you get promoted based on how you um, embody those values. And, and, you know, just a couple of them are, are like being accountable, solutions driven, kind of the NASA, you know, work the problem thing, mm -hmm. as well as being very direct and straightforward. So, I personally think of feedback as a gift and people at Vision Point have to be willing to give and to receive feedback as I think is the best way to professionally grow. So, um, so yeah, the values are a big part. Um, I was the CEO of Vision Point for 20 years after starting it. And um, at the beginning of 2021, we brought on a fantastic CEO, Craig Heldman, and um, I'm now able to focus my energy is in the chair position, which you know what that's like. It's, yep. it's like, it's amazing. Um, I'm still highly engaged in the strategic direction of the company through the board and with Craig, but not required on the, in the day-to-day -day operations. 
That's great. And, and so, you know, the work that Vision Point does right now in the higher education space, tell me a little bit more about the type of work that you guys do. Yeah, so we um, so we are a marketing firm, but we're we're tech enabled. So <clears throat> we help our clients, um, which would be you know universities, colleges, community colleges. We help them from everything from determining what their brand and positioning is to communicating that out. So if you think of like the top of the funnel, the awareness, all the way down to the advertising. And then through the enrollment process and admissions process, we help with those communications as well. So all the way down to through to enrollment, like when your son gets his gets his admittance letters and and then he decides which school he wants to go to. You know, it's been amazing to go through the process of trying to get a child into university, um, starting from really the year before when you start to get emails from various mm -hmm. schools after the test scores have come in and, and going through that whole process. And it's so different than obviously when I was applying to university and the communications is extremely sophisticated, you know, a lot of messaging, a lot of emails. So I can completely see the the world that Vision Point plays in and, and really has has shaped. It's quite exciting. I must admit it's not, it, you know, it was it's very fun to get some of those notes early on, you know. And I think my son was like, oh my God, they really like me. Or, <laughs> or yeah. but uh, I don't know if all of it, all of it was that nice, but some of them were nice. So, so tell me a little bit more about the higher education uh, marketing landscape these days. I mean, what are the, what are universities uh, seeking you guys out for and what are some of their, their challenges? Yeah. So, um, so some of the biggest challenges right now um, is, and I, there's several of them and they've all kind of come together at a point um, partially because uh, it's really been accelerated because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. But so there's the, um, hold on, man, I just need sure. to, I need to do something real quick. Hold yeah, on. yeah, no worries. Oh, no, somebody's doing it for me. All right. Got Keep a new puppy <laughs> and, she's, and she's yelping. Okay, so yeah. let me start that over. So um, some of the challenge, there are several challenges that are in the marketplace for higher education. And um, the pandemic has really sort of accelerated the height of those. Um, but I'll, I'll go through a few of them. Th one thing is the birth rate in the United States dropped in 2008 when we went through the last kind of recession, depression. And it hasn't, but it hasn't gone back up. So mm -hmm. there's simply less high school graduates for colleges to recruit. Mm -hmm. And so if you take 2008 and then you add 18 years on that, then you've got, you know, 2026, 2025 is when people are expecting that the number of high school graduates to really drop off. So, um, so even before that, it's, it's already starting to decrease. And we're, so we're seeing that um, the value of higher education has really come been called into question, you know, the mm. value of a, of a four year traditional undergraduate degree and there is a growing demand for online education versus physical education. So that's a lot of that has been accelerated because of the pandemic. Um, but it, it was already there. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a growing demand for academic credentials that are based on what you learn and a lot less about how much time you were in a class. Right. So, you know, you were sitting in a class. Um there's also the growing need for lifelong learning rather than mm -hmm. a, spe a specific degree that's being perceived as higher education being the end zone. Like you just go to school, you get that degree after four years. OK, I'm done. But now um, I think people are realizing higher education really needs to be a lifelong pursuit. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's so many, so many people out there like the Elon Musk of this world kind of saying like, oh, degrees don't matter. However, I, I certainly think that there is just such tremendous value that uh, and growing that happens when children or uh, young adults go off to, to school. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I can see, clearly see that the space continues to be, I guess, growing in some ways, 
especially I would say in the top 50 schools where it just seems to become ever more competitive <laughs> every, every day. But, you know, you talked about how the pandemic has shifted the landscape a bit. And certainly I think we've read all of the stories about schools not taking test scores because students couldn't take the tests. And what are some of the things that you saw as, as challenges with some of your clients during the pandemic and, and maybe some opportunities that they found? Yeah, so I think when they all had to close essentially in the spring of 2020 and figure out how to still deliver um, an education online, that was that was obviously pretty dramatic. Oh my um, God, I can only imagine the calls that your teams were having. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was that was pretty dramatic. And then even going into the fall, not knowing whether they were going to be on, they had to be online 100 percent or if they could do a hybrid or, or what their situation would be. So that that changed a lot for the instructors and for the schools, of course. And um, and it also, you know, for the students, for all the prospective students, not knowing what school was going to be like going into the pandemic um, because of that, you know, like mm -hmm. what that experience would be. And then, of course, as you mentioned, the tests are almost everyone is test optional now. So yeah. that makes it very different. And then on top of that, there has been, um, as it should be, a real focus on access and making sure that um, that higher education is available for everybody who wants to pursue it right. and to make sure that um, that the institutions are are um, are bringing in representative students from all different shapes, sizes, economic yeah. backgrounds, everything. And, um, and so that's been another thing that, um, that has really been a focus. Um, you know, like you, we talk a little bit about your son trying to get into specific universities. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of universities are, are, trying to um, make and form their classes. So they want their incoming classes to look certain ways because mm -hmm. they really want to make sure that they have diversity yeah. um, represented in, in each one of their classes. So that's another piece of, um, you know, it's not, it's not about just marketing and getting in the, the number of students. It's about getting in the right students and the right mix so that they can fulfill their mission. Yeah, completely. And um, yeah, no, it, it completely makes sense. And and certainly I think the applications for some of those types of schools have have gone way up and it, it does does play a role. I, you know, I think in some ways, you know, uh, the fact that I think the numbers for diversity, equity and inclusion were sp spectacular last year at most of these schools, they, they actually went way, way up. And um, I think perhaps, you know, stopping the tests being a block on some of that stuff was probably ultimately a, a good thing. So, you know, we'll see how this, this shapes going forward. But, you know, you mentioned, Diane, one of your passions is culture. And as in your role as a chair, I'm curious to ask you about culture during the pandemic, you know, even in your own company, how did you foster culture uh, when we've suddenly found ourselves living in this odd at home or hybrid world. Yeah. You know, um, I think the biggest headline has been to be sure to take the time to talk to people and connect with them one-on-one -on -one and, um, and to try to build, um, build connections across the team. So, um, so like one of the great things that our, our, CEO has done is um, is had a one on one with every single employee, um, which I think is really important. And that's it's kind of impressive um, too when you have when we're hiring so many new employees. So yeah. so there's that, but then there's also um, we have um, we we know that working from home can be really hard if you don't have boundaries. Um, if, and it's and it's hard sometimes. If you know what it's like in an agency environment. Yeah. It's hard to not work all the time and not in you know and have your personal time over here. Um, and so um, so when we first 
started working from home. Everybody was working from home in March of 2020. You know, we we started to feel and hear from our team that they were feeling burnout. Yeah. And so we 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 brought we have a, we have a twice a year we have a two day summit where mm-hmm. we close the operations and we bring everybody together. Okay. Of course, we couldn't bring everybody physically together, but we spent the bulk of that summit talking about um, about burnout and what we could do and how, you know, it's, it's okay to talk about it and, and what we needed to do coming out of that. We, we have started this year with unlimited PTO, um, you know, so that, so that people can, you know, feel more comfortable in managing their own life and world. And, and there's lots of other recognition and things that we're, that we're doing and that we're expanding, but, um, but I think those are kind of the biggest things is just doing your best to still build those one-on-one and group relationships, yeah. even though you, you can't physically be with a person every day. Yeah, no, it's, you have some great insight there. And as a person who spent a good chunk of his career in the advertising and marketing world uh, as well, you know, agency life is all consuming. And and you're right, you know, you spend hours upon hours upon hours in the office. And and it, it very much, I think, was very tough for agency people to turn off during the, the pandemic. Probably everyone had that problem. But I think agency people in particular, because they're so service oriented, really. And and it has been something that I've noticed a lot of people have to retrain, reskill, uh, you know, almost uh, make a very conscious effort to kind of cut things off at specific times and try to carve out that space for for family time and things like that. But yeah. it completely makes sense. Well, Diane, I mean, as you look forward into this year. I kind of look at 2022 as such a big number. It's literally like I said to a friend of mine, I said, I think we've made it to the future somehow. We made it. (laughs) You know, yeah. But, you know, what does the future look like for you guys? Well, um, we are growing rapidly and um, we have, you know, I guess the good news about the way we serve our clients and what we've been doing with our clients and kind of the, a lot of the changes in the marketplace for them is that there are many, many things that we can do for our clients. And so the business is coming in um, and we have plans of growing and scaling significantly. Um, And a lot of that's going to happen in 2022. Um, I would say on the flip side of that, the biggest challenge in that for us is finding people. Um, It's just, and I'm sure you guys are experiencing this too, but it's just really hard to find people with the pandemic um, and, you know, so many people like quitting their job in November of, of 2021, you know, it's just really hard to find um, folks. And, yeah. and we have to have good people in order to be able to deliver for our clients. Yeah, no, I hear you. I mean, I think some of the things that you seem to be thinking about from your culture, though, cultural perspective will be a great addition. I mean, um, as you offer more flexibility and really think about think about a business, perhaps from the employee perspective and not the company perspective. And that's always that that's that lovely balance that we all try to find. So, mm-hmm. Diane, it's been great talking to you today about Vision Point Marketing. Uh, we've been speaking with Diane Sutton. She is the founder and chair of Vision Point Marketing, which is an integrated marketing agency that helps institutions of higher education meet their admissions, branding, and communications goal. Diane, if someone wanted to learn more about what you and the team at Vision Point are up to, where, where should they find you? Um, well, they can go to Vision Point's website, which is visionpointmarketing.com. And they are, anybody is always welcome to look for me and LinkedIn under Diane Sutton. Um, I am happy to connect with folks. I, I love just learning about other people and, um, and building that network. Well, it's been great talking to you, Diane. And thank you so much for being on Uncaged today. Thanks so much, Pam. Appreciate it.
Bye-bye.